Now, while it's not news that Africa needs huge financing to close the development gaps that exist, so what role can impact investors play to help plug the deficit? I discussed this and more with Mezwo Unali, his uh, managing partner at Sahel Capital. Impact investing is um, uh, intentionality by institutional investors to ensure that they're doing good as they're making investments. And there's a broad spectrum of um, what is defined as impact investing. On one end, uh, there are those who are doing, um, providing grant type capital uh, to different projects to um, do good. There are those that are providing capital, venture philanthropy, providing capital and looking for a nominal return. And on the other end of the spectrum, there are people who are looking for commercial return, but are, are being intentional about what type of impact they have. And in addition to that intentionality, it is paying attention to um, what specific good are you doing? How are you measuring that good? At the same time, how are you ensuring sustainability in what you do um, as you invest? All right, but let me clear up some, I want, I'd like you to clear, let me clear up some misconceptions here. So would you consider like an angel investor or an impact investor? Um, it, it depends because there are angel investors who um, are purely investing for that commercial return and the intentionality of having social impact uh, may not be there. So I think the, the key difference is as you are making that investment, what is the specific problem you're trying to solve? What is the good that you want to build from that investment you're making? And how are you measuring that? So to the degree, for example, an angel investor invest in uh, fintech and specifically geared towards um, how do you increase financial inclusion amongst the unbanked in a particular region. That can potentially be defined as impact investing. But an angel investor could also invest in a different type of technology that may not necessarily have that positive impact in people's lives. Now, what's interesting as well is that people try and stretch that definition of impact investing you know, to, in, in, in what they do. But I think the key thing to bear in mind with impact investing is intentionality about doing good. It's how you're measuring this potential impact. And in terms of the tools that are used, the broad range of structuring tools that can be used to achieve both your specific commercial return expectation as well as um, specific impact that you want to achieve. All right, but looking at Sub-Saharan Africa, then it means uh, quite a lot of opportunities. It, it opens up quite a lot of opportunities for, for impact investment because when you look at the challenges we have in the health sector, mm -hmm. we look at what's happening in the agricultural sector, we look at you know education sector, um, infrastructure def def the deficit in, on the continent. It means. Africa is like very ripe for, for getting these type of investors. Yeah, there's definitely a huge need across a range of sectors, from healthcare to fintech to agriculture. Um, there's a huge need and demand for impact investing um, within Africa, definitely. All right, so let's get into that the area now, filling that gap, you know, in financing. I'd like to understand first what you're doing in the area you, you're doing. I understand you're, you're one of the impact investors this year, and uh, and um, your, your your organization is really strong, big on that on that one. And then I'd like to know first the challenge of filling that gap, and what what areas are you plugging into? Sure. So to give some context, we um, a agri food and agribusiness private equity firm. Uh, we manage roughly $66 million in capital, and we invest across the value chain uh, in food and agriculture in Nigeria. And beyond looking to achieve a commercial return when we invest, a core part of what we do is how do we build out the value chain towards the Nigerian farmer? How are we investing in companies that are increasing local uh, supply of various crops th through uh, their operations? How are we doing value addition? And ultimately, how are we addressing food security in Nigeria and the region? How are we addressing uh, producing products locally grown that meet the needs of Nigeria's middle class? How are we fixing issues like post-harvest losses? How are we increasing efficiency of uh, food distribution within Nigeria? So a lot of our investments are geared towards seeing how do we address these specific challenges while at the same time achieving um, a return. All right, I'd like to get a better understanding into some of the models you're using and how you're working with government on one hand, if you are working with government, mm -hmm. you know, in driving some of this agenda. So um, in a number of different ways. So um, within our fund itself, we have a, um, a blended finance structure. So um, back in 2013, the uh, Nigerian government under Dr. Adishina at the time wanted to catalyze a new type of capital to the agriculture sector um, to complement um, 
the existing debt capital that the banks were providing. Because if you look at the time, roughly 3% of bank loan portfolio was geared towards agriculture. And how do you get longer um, tenured finance, better structure to the needs of companies in the space? So they decided to put money on the table for a fund manager to get towards the sector. KFW, the German government's development finance institution, decided to back whatever capital the Nigerian government put in, and also Nigeria's Sovereign Wealth Fund as well put in some additional money. So in 2014, um, our fund was launched with $33 million in capital geared towards solving challenges within the space, and they went out and raised additional money from different international uh, investors to raise it to the current fund size. So it's a blend of sovereign uh, financing as well as DFI financing to provide capital solutions to SMEs within, um, within Nigeria in the food and agriculture space. In addition to that, we have a technical assistance facility. So this is grant money we can use for capacity building, for um, product certification, for uh, outgrower schemes, anything that we can do to enhance value creation at, at different companies. All right. For me, one other thing I'd like to know is measuring that impact. Mm -hmm. You know, I would like to know how you, you guys are going about measuring the impact that you're you are putting on the field. Sure. So there a um, so each company is different and the number of metrics we use. So maybe it would be helpful if I use some specific examples. So, for example, in northern Nigeria, we have an investment in a dairy company that aggregates milk from pastoralists. That milk is fed into the processing plant and the company makes a yogurt and that yogurt is sold in stores across the country. So we pay particular attention to the volume of milk that is aggregated from the pastoralists um, and the number of people we aggregate that milk from. And, and we're very intentional about that in monitoring that so that uh, we're not using milk powder to make products, but that raw milk coming from our own, um, our own cattle in, in the country. And uh, we have a... Um, a cassava starch operation in Kogi State, um, as well as a integrated rice operation in Anambra State. And with both companies beyond our commercial farm feeding um, crop into our processing operations, we also source a broad range of crop from uh, different smallholder farmers. So it's how many smallholder farmers are we sourcing from, it's what quantity of crop are we getting from them at a particular period of time. And we pay particular attention to this and we look to see how do we increase the capacity of these farmers to supply crop to us so we can feed this into our system. And it goes beyond just the purchase operation, it's how we're looking at boosting yields of the farmers, uh, how do we give inputs where required to the farmers, how do we try to arrange financing for these farmers so they're better positioned to provide inputs to our processing facility which ultimately benefits them and benefits us. More or less trying to ensure that the entire value chain is gains from the, from the operations. Yes. All right then, so let's look at other things here. And um, I'd like to understand here, you know, some of the asset classes beyond agriculture for you guys are looking into. And then understanding that risk assessment that you look at before you make a, make, make a decision to invest. So we only look at food and agriculture. That, that's all we do. The other firms that look at the other sectors, but for us is food and agriculture is a sector we know very well and we think there's each opportunity to make a return and have impact. And the assessment process is, is, um, is, is pretty extensive. So it, it's, it's significant time spent um, uh, uh, meeting, getting to know the entrepreneur, the sponsor, getting comfortable with them and them with us. It's almost like a marriage. You have to build comfort with each other. And when we decide to engage, it's, um, we do extensive due diligence, lawyers, auditors, going through the company's operations. But ultimately for us, from a big picture perspective, it is with this particular company and platform, can the investment we make um, help address food security issues? Will the company produce more food that will address food security in Nigeria? We have 180 million people, another 70 million people will be added in the next 10 years. How are we producing food that meets this requirement? Um, import substitution is very key for us. Can an investment in this company um, generate products which um, replace or substitute products we're currently importing? So, for example, with Crest Agro, a cassava starch processing operation, it produces cassava starch that a number of the different multinationals who import corn starch can use as a substitute. Um, so, there are different key things from food security, from looking at import substitution from um, addressing or increasing efficiency in different crop value chains. There's a range of um, opportunities we look at within that space. All right, but you know, 
for me, I want to also, yeah, you talked about the metrics you're using, but then I'm trying to imagine first understanding the, the large gap, the large gap that is, is, is evident in, in Africa or Nigeria as we look at it, and then trying to see how we can better move the needle, especially with, with, with impact, impact financing. How, how much do you think we can, you, we can close this gap if we get more, more people in, in, invested in, 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 in that light? So th there's definitely a huge gap. Um, there's a report um, that was produced recently that said that roughly um, in the past 10 year period between 2005 and 2015, there was roughly $1.9 billion put towards impact type investments across all sectors in Nigeria, 181 different investments. But there's huge need in the health sector. There's huge need within education. There's huge need within um, agriculture, not just in Nigeria, but in many different African countries. And uh, so we definitely need to mobilize more money to come to solve these problems. And it can't just be capital from the governments because the governments don't have enough budget to allocate towards the need that is there. And so it's key for um, different stakeholders, both the governments, both private sector players, both donors, to see how can you create innovative structures that allow you to um, solve pressing issues, problems within different sectors. And you can use that with a broad range of um, approaches. Everything from uh, what people are very familiar with, which is philanthropy, effectively grants to address particular issues. But at the same time, to the degree you can unlock capital that wants a return and is willing to tackle um, big challenges and do it in a way where they can get a return but also solve problems that allows more money to come to solve these issues. And I think that's part of what we do as well, is how do we put together the resources, the people, the thought process to enable us to solve these big challenges, in our case, within food and agriculture, um, and do it in a way that uh, investors that want a return are comfortable that they will get the return. At the same time, we're addressing um, where there's a real need in the food and agriculture sector. I have been speaking to Mezwo Umuneli, he's a managing partner at Sahir Capital.